Hello everyone, this is Camilla of the Alexandrite System. It's Mother's Day on Sunday. I know that isn't an easy holiday for a lot of people, so I thought it might be nice to have a video talking about system motherhood, uh, parenting of system children, because I think it's important to remember as plural people uh, who may or may not have had tumultuous relationships with their mothers or non-existent relationships with their mothers, you can be what was not given to you. So for those who don't know, I am a system mother. Audrey is also a mother in the system. Um, she tends to take care of the older children and actually a fair amount of the adults in the system. I know that Claudia, Sandra, Ellen, Oak, probably several others, uh, all consider Audrey to be their mother. We've noticed a kind of pattern in our system where if you made it to, say, eight or nine without, um, serious incident, um, you, you pretty much grew up all the way. And we suspect that Audrey showed up after that age. And as such, the younger members of the system were already asleep, so she was there to parent the ones that were still around and awake. Or at least that's our best guess. As Audrey has said in videos before, a lot of system work is educated guessing and piecing things together, and sometimes you won't know everything. But over the last year, those children who were already asleep by that point have fallen into my care. So I think it would be fun to take a moment and uh, tell you about my children. So my involvement with the kids really started with Cloudy. So early to mid-2021, I was running a lot. Um, need to get back into that. At some point, I started noticing that I felt watched internally. And that's not a sensation that I notice often. I'm a bit more... I find that I haven't really honed my inner world perceptions or my general plural perceptions all that well. And I suppose around that point, Cloudy noticed that I noticed them and started talking to me while I ran. They didn't say much. They're not really a big talker. They're a very quiet person. So my runs became Claudia coaching me in one ear and Cloudy commenting on the, the nature around us in the other ear. Claudia is a very nature-inclined child. They do a lot of art and they almost exclusively draw plants and animals, that sort of thing. They seem to really enjoy it. And it was nice. It was very nice to have that encouragement from both of them. I remember there was actually a day where we were running in the morning and we saw uh, two different bunnies, just wild, wild bunnies out. Completely different areas too. That was a very good day. Cloudy very much liked that day. I liked it too. And I suppose it sort of spread from there. I guess Cloudy told the other kids in the system that I was nice and that they enjoyed spending time with me or something. And suddenly I started having Clover uh, spend time with me and watching me play chess and and asking for me when they were sick. Clover is very uh, prone to being out when we're ill. And when that happens, I'll sit there and comfort them. After Clover woke up in February, um, Meadow uh, woke up about a month later. Meadow is a little bit older. She's, I believe, the oldest of the children that I care for. Perhaps not counting Cloudy, because Cloudy, their age is a bit fluid between 6 and 10. But Meadow consistently stays somewhere between 8 and 9. So she's sort of my, my oldest daughter. Meadow is someone who really enjoys helping and making friends. She seems to really love to make people feel happy and valued. Over the past year, Meadow has really become, like, I guess mommy's a little helper, for, for lack of a better, for lack of a better phrase of it. She didn't talk to me much at first, um, but she started being more involved with me when um, Apple showed up. Apple is very sweet. Um, they're very troubled. After Apple woke up, they caught a glimpse of themselves in a mirror, or a glimpse of the body in the mirror, and did not 
see what they expected to see, and all of a sudden the full weight of being gone for 20 years really, like, caved in on them. They were pretty inconsolable for the rest of the night, the rest of the week, the rest of the month. And Meadow became sort of my go-between for Apple. And that's a role that Meadow often helps me with now. She's sort of my uh, ambassador to the, to the younger kids. Or perhaps she's the kid's ambassador to me. You'll be happy to know that Apple is doing a lot better these days. Our trip to California last month, Apple actually spent uh, an afternoon out with um, one of the Evergreens littles. They climbed trees, they looked at the ocean, they actually saw some otters in the ocean that were, um, that were like hanging out with surfers. And in the car on the way back, um, Apple said it was the best day that they ever had. Not going to cry. Not going to cry on camera. I'm very happy for them. Then there's Dandelion. Uh, Dandelion was also rather troubled when they first showed up. They had a time where they were basically not quite catatonic, but um, just frozen and sort of unable to really move or speak at all from dissociation, stress, something like that. It's not really happened uh, since then, but I do try to keep an eye on their stress levels. Luckily in our new space, nothing has seemed to stress them out that much. Dandelion is very sweet and very shy, but uh, a couple of months ago we found out that they really enjoy uh, crossword puzzles, which I thought was very interesting. None of the other kids have really expressed an interest in in that sort of thing, but they seem to get a real excitement from it. So it's always fun to watch them do that when they're around. And very recently we met uh, Snow Pea, who we're still trying to learn more about, but we are trying to make sure that they know that they are welcome in this family and they are loved and appreciated, and that they'll have as much support as they want or need. There is also Abe, um, who is also relatively new. They've only been out once or twice, so I've not really gotten a chance to know them yet. On the day that they woke up, they actually uh, went into our spreadsheet that we have of all of our system members and wrote, um, My name means B. I like blankets and ice cream. So that's Ave. <laughs> and Goose. We don't hear from Goose a lot. Goose is a child who knows what they like and dislike, um, and are very happy to enforce boundaries. We started calling them Goose, and they eventually settled on that as a name, because um, they hiss when they are touched in any way that they do not like. At a time when they were out more, um, we actually apologized to Mads because they were hissing at Mads a lot, and Mads said that they that they really like uh, Goose, and that they like um, how clear they are about their boundaries. And I like that too. And I like Goose too. I think that Goose is a wonderful example of setting and enforcing boundaries, and not being afraid to do that with loved ones. Admittedly, there are children in the system that I don't know as well. Sunny and Lexi seem to fall under Audrey's jurisdiction more. Leona doesn't seem to have any particular desire to be parented. I don't think I have ever even heard from Harmony before, but if any of these children need me or want me to be there, I will be there in a heartbeat. I really love them all so much. You know, if you told me in October 2019 when I first woke up that I would eventually be taking care of multiple system children and calling myself a mother and just feeling this maternal and familial, I wouldn't have believed you. <laughs> I did not feel any of those things then. I did not feel liked, to be honest. I didn't feel valued. Um, and I was very cut off from the rest of the system. 
I had sort of the typical host experience of, you know, realizing that you're a part of a system and everyone else is already up to speed and you can't really communicate with everyone. And, you know, I've told that story on this channel before about how in a, a therapy session in early 2020, our therapist told me that either Sandra or Susan or somebody had said that they like me and they want to get to know me better. And I absolutely bawled. It was the first time that I had ever uh, outright cried. Um, now I cry all the time. <laughs> But I didn't know that they liked me. So I tried to give that feeling to the kids. I tried to make sure that they know that they are absolutely adored and cared for. And despite the fact that I did not birth them, I love them. And I am here for them. So I think that's enough crying on camera for one video. <laughs> I suppose what I want one to take away from this video is that internal family is just as real and just as valuable as external family, sometimes more. And if Mother's Day is hard for you, I think that maybe it would be good to hold yourself close and to tell yourself that you love yourself, whether you are plural or not. Thank you very much for watching. Thank you to our patrons, especially the ones that you will see in the credits momentarily. Becoming a patron is a lovely way to support the channel, but of course if you're not able to support us over there, just leaving a like, a comment, subscribing helps out the channel immensely. I hope that you all have a restful weekend, and I hope that you're all able to feel good. I will see you next time. Bye.